Hello chicos, chicas! Today on the menu is going to be none other than the GOAT himself, Magnus Carlsen. Um, last night, I believe, um, at the Chess Olympiad, there was a ceremony celebrating uh, FIDE's 100th birthday and uh, multiple awards were handed out. They didn't quite call them the GOAT, it was something like uh, the best female uh, and the best male player going to Judith Polga, of course, and to Magnus Carlsen, um, respectively. But I think that basically the essence was that the greatest player of all time. And um, yeah, there is no question in my mind that that should go to Magnus Carlsen, although he very humbly said that Kasparov is a more deserving, uh, deserving recipient of that honor. And as much as I'm a big fan of Kasparov too, I do think that Carlsen has surpassed Kasparov um, in every department there is. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I thought that for this occasion, therefore, uh, the most logical thing to do would be to analyze a Magnus game. And as luck would have it, Magnus did win his game against uh, Lee Kuang Liem. A uh, absolutely top tier GM from Vietnam. So let's have a look at this game. Do you not expect any flashy, um, you know, checkmate attack festivities like uh, what I have been posting for the last couple of days? Obviously, above 2700, tiny nuances decide games, uh, not so much the fireworks, but sometimes those nuances are just as instructive. Excuse me, and fun to watch as uh, those very fun sacrificial attacks. So the opening started off as a semi-slav, which then uh, transposed back into a stock standard mainline queen's gambit declined. Magnus often uh, falls back to this uh, opening and plays it with noticeable success. Queen c2, knight e8. Um, offering the trade of the bishop and regrouping the knight, a very interesting and clever maneuver. Basically, one knight goes to d6, another to f6, and then we would like to plant a knight on the e4. That's the basic idea. Bishop d6, insisting on the trade of the bishop. It may look weird to lower-rated players why we are trading what seems to be our good bishop and keep the bad one. But the logic here is, is that Black is a little bit cramped and black is a little bit passive. So trading one pair of pieces is going to be totally fine. And then there is a very clear path for the knights to follow and uh, pursue and basically yeah, just go for the e4 square and shut down e4. Of course, the flip side of the coin is, is that white gets a massive knight on e5 too, but uh, Magnus doesn't seem to be particularly phased and uh, plays very logical chess. And believe it or not, already here, I dislike f3. Uh, and I even more so dislike knight e2. And these two moves meant that the position went from plus 0.2 to minus 0.56. Um, yeah, things can uh, change rapidly. So I think that, um, yeah, f3 was maybe okay. The engines actually don't disapprove of it. I would have preferred just to play castle and uh, take it from here. Anyway, f3, rook e8, knight e2, knight d7, and it turns out that we have got problems on the e file. The h file is absolutely useless, which is why I thought that casting would make a fair bit of sense. Um, overall, it just looks like the white pieces are occupying seemingly logical squares. But they do very little. So, for example, after take take, in this structure, white is usually meant to play for a minority attack. Now, that has been completely shut down. Like, that is not happening. White could also play for e4, but with this wonky pawn structure, that looks weird. And the king is also insecure. So, what do you do? Um, something like queen f2, queen e7, queen d2, bishop f5. Uh, is a good demonstration that it's black who has the initiative and the side who is calling the shots, although this would definitely have been the lesser of the evils. Instead, however, Lequan went with rook h5. Very bold move. I think, and this is, by the way, so interesting when you spot something like this, um, 
and I may be wrong, by the way, about this because I don't know the rules about draw offers at the Olympiad. But generally speaking, a move like this, half of the times, is actually a draw offer. And if you think about why I'm saying this a little bit, then you will probably figure out uh, the answer to that, which is that basically white with rook h5 invites knight f6, tempo, go home, and ta-da. We have repetition, we have a draw. I do think that it might have had to do with the draw for that uh, Liquan played uh, rook h5, but Magnus was not interested. He goes, nah, nah. I, I like my e-file, I like how sturdy my position is, I like the lack of obvious plans on your side, senor, so show me what you got. Take, take, king f2, and here, there is a very interesting moment in the game, and I think this is one of the biggest telltale signs of why Magnus is actually the goat, because I would find it very difficult for black to resist the temptation to take this. Which is a motive that was used in the game, by the way. Um, as you could probably figure from the thumbnail too. King takes queen e8 check and we pick off the rock. What's wrong with it, you may ask? I'll show you. After king f2, queen takes, check, knight f4. And all of a sudden, we have got some small problems. Nothing major. Like right now I can't come in because um, I think I can take this actually. And then I can just walk here, take, and walk away with 5,000 extra pieces. But the mere fact that I have got so many frets on the light squares and all of the white pieces all of a sudden became very active, this should tell us that this is not the way to go. What did Magnus do? He goes like, no worries. I will just shut down this entire operation. No biggie. And indeed... This would be, under normal circumstances, a tragically terrible move because it weakens the dark color complex really badly. But the reality is, is that this knight on e2 is so horrendously placed that it doesn't have the faintest hope to be rerouted toward e5. I would need to play one, two, three, four moves for that. That is way too unrealistic. So f5 played, and this is where things went completely off the rails from uh, the Vietnamese perspective because I don't know what this was. Uh, obviously, rookie free is pending and um, he more or less just ignored it. And now white is a pawn to the... Uh, sorry, black is a pawn to the good. Although white does have some counterplay because now the minor pieces are a bit loose. But Magnus consolidates this like with so efficient in such an efficient manner with seemingly so little effort that it almost feels like yeah he's playing a different game so just pulls back the queen and attacks the d4 pawn and done dusted queen c7 and this is already headed towards the final tactical skirmish that is going to decide the game knight f4 uh rook c8 note that queen takes d4 check here king f1 and all of a sudden we have a bit of a drama here because this knight is loose and i don't really have anywhere to go with it because there is a rookie seven penetration to follow so don't get greedy folks instead magnus played rook c8 and that basically is uh, a cordial invitation for a queen sacrifice for rook and two minus which on paper is excellent so take 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 i wish that those double question marks um hadn't come up check and then uh take on b2 or you know sooner or later we we shall take on b2 um this is the idea that um the vietnamese gm pursued the problem here is once again the mat works out for white perfectly and if you only evaluate the position uh, on the basis of numbers then you are golden right but there is more to it than just the numbers and that is the fact that of course you don't go to h7 like i did but go to f7 that is the fact that a the queen becomes incredibly active two uh the white army is a little bit disjointed 
Note that g5 is a threat to hit the knight and uh, hang the bishop. The rook is separated from the rest of the crew. And we are picking off a lot of pawns. g5. Maybe Li Kuang was very, very attracted to this idea. And he thought that this was sufficient to play for at least a draw. Obviously, I can't take. Very clever trick because of takes uh, check and takes. And if the king goes to e7, then there is check and then I can take here. I think this is how far the Vietnamese GM calculated. But his evaluation was way off here. Because after queen b2, black has already two connected passes. Two and a half. And with the a-pawn being so motherless, it's likely that black is going to have four connected pass pawns. And then the math no longer adds up and it doesn't make any sense. And Carson converts here without any dramas whatsoever. He takes the third pawn and he just starts rolling said pawns. Defends b7. Queen b5 check, bringing the defender, the queen, a little bit closer to home. And ta-da, the pawn is rolling and the game is over. Now that was definitely a goat-esque move, sacking the queen for the knight, introducing a new queen to the party in two more moves and still leaving us with three um, potential future queens too. Um, but yeah. Now the White King is in mortal danger too. And so that was the time when the Vietnamese GM Lee Quang Liam gave up. This would have been, could have been the last touch. Masterful play by Magnus. Equalizing in the opening, posing problems, um, out calculating the opponent in the complications, converting with computer-like accuracy. That's what the GOAT does. That's why he is the rightful owner of that beautiful uh, award that he's holding in the thumbnail. And uh, that is going to be me for now, folks. Thank you very much for watching this video. Oh, I forgot to show you the standings. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually big. So, men, India is 8 out of 8. Insane performance. But what is even cooler is that my countrymen... Uh, our third that is super exciting stuff really 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 exciting stuff essentially as uh, Arthur Nixon put it in his uh, tweet yesterday the Olympiad started around round 7 or 8 um, that's when we are at the pointy end of the stick so we will see how we go but for the time being it is looking mighty good for Hungary as for the ladies Again, India is in the lead, but there are a fair few teams uh, tailing them that I think can still claim uh, their right for the, um, you know, for the podium and Lord knows which part of the podium. So I think this is going to be a better contested um, last few rounds than the one for the men. But either way, I think it's going to be a tremendous fun to watch and follow the remainder of the chess olympiad thank you very much for watching this video um please don't forget to like the to comment to sub and i'm going to see you in the next one very soon thanks for watching